Um, EV99 is the bartender. That was pretty pretty weird, but maybe yes, maybe but, that's the same guy from Job is Palace. Maybe that's the same dude. The right. torture. You'll soon learn it's some torture, respect. Detroit torture. Yeah. Oh boy, I, I was excited. It was Tatooine as well. Uh, you know. Obviously, so much of the Star Wars action comes from Tatooine. You know, both of the main protagonists of the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy come from Tatooine. Although only one turns out to be a child murderer that we know of. Of course, the Death Star, blah, blah, blah. Maybe there are kids on it. Who knows? It could be a thousand kids in a day. We don't know. But at least Union. At least Union workers. Yeah, it, was at least, <laughs> it, was at least, it was at least an economic political crime for sure. Um, so... So this is Carbonite Bounty BS. This is the show where we talk about the Mandalorian. And uh, I'm Scott. Oh, we didn't talk about this. Hi, Scott. Hey, and this is uh, Ken and Tony. Uh, Sam's not with us this week because he is on a trip. And I uh, don't pay him. So here we, here we are. Uh, guys, we are talking about chapter number five, The Gunslinger, today. And we're going to be talking about the Mandalorian Guys, uh, real quick before we jump in, uh, just to let everybody know, you can find us over at nerdcyclopedia.com, and you can send us your feedback to nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Also, like this video so it gets a little more exposure, and subscribe to our channel, Nerd Cyclopedia, here. Uh, guys, let's start with Ken. Ken, what was your favorite part of the episode? The opening, the opening scene, I have to say. The mm -hmm. opening scene when Mando ship landed on a very familiar planet Ooh. it was a very warm and fuzzy for me uh, uh i appreciated the way they did it the way they brought it in it was sensitive it was dramatic and i think they used the original background shot that yeah. they used in a new hope i mean i'm pretty darn sure that was the same footage that they used uh in um the Star Wars when it was originally released with the two moons. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of references to the two moons through the whole episode. So that I like that a lot. That was my favorite part. Awesome, awesome. Tony, what did you like the most about this episode? Um going to the opposite, the very end. Oh. Oof. Um <laughs> very, very end. I mean the, the beginning was incredible, but yeah, at the very, very end we see this cloaked figure and I guess we're gonna talk about that or who we think or like, wait a minute. Who's this person? <laughs> so leaves us hanging. So I love that suspense aspect about it. And the very end scene was the best for me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And, you know, for me, my favorite thing was seeing Amy Sedaris, who is, you know, uh, a comedian. Uh, you know, <clears throat> she's been in a lot of stuff. Even Strangers with Candy, when I was younger, I would watch that on Comedy Central. She played a 50-year-old returning drug addict who was coming home like a Sunday afternoon school special. Stephen Colbert was in it. Uh, super neat show. Seeing her in this is awesome. Uh this is the way to do this sort of, I don't know, want to call it stunt casting a little bit. This is the way to integrate people who are more famous into this story. Uh, I think this show uh, has done a really, really good job at that. And every single episode, it feels like there's a special, a special guest and they're just woven into it, whether it's Brian Posehn or, um, you know, Gina Carano, these people existed, they exist uh, organically in the world. And so it's believable that they do what they do. So it's really, really cool. Um, I like that a lot. Super huge fan also of seeing a little bit of the space battle at the beginning, the very, very beginning of this. Um, one of my favorite things about Star Wars has always been the pilots and stuff. You know, when I was younger, my buddy, uh, my buddy of mine was really into Star Wars, just like me, and we read all the EU novels, and we read all the X-Wing stuff. So for me, that sort of space combat is something that, you know, I know it's harder to do when you've got a TV budget, but I just really appreciate it when it shows up. Um, what did you guys think about the Mando's flying there? <laughs> what did you think about about his skills? You think he did a pretty good job? Um, it was different. I just think, and I agree, that was the one thing through five episodes. If you want to look at Star Wars lore, the one thing that was missing was a great space battle, and now we got yeah. it. So we've kind of like, you know, checked all the boxes pretty much. But um, it was interesting. I mean, I'm like, well, how's he going to get out of this one? Yeah. And, you know, he did, I mean, I figured out of all the space battles out of nine movies, it was a little bit different. So, I mean, I was I was into it. Yeah, I was like, I mean, a unique way of getting out of it. Let's put it that way. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think I think Mando did a little bit of Han, Han Solo style. Yeah. <laughs> 
his ship, and I don't, I don't know what style of ship it is. Uh, they mention it's uh, Carillion in style, so mm-hmm. it's something having to do. But it, but it has pod racer engines yeah. on it. Anyone know that? Those, I mean, so it's it's kind of a, a it's a hunk of junk, like yeah. the Vulcan. So the flying was kind of clunky, but flipping switches and levers and very uh, how how like any of us would fly a starship, yes. you know. What would it be like? And I, I think he, I think they captured that sort of normal uh, Star Wars esque uh, piloting ability. Yeah, just a bunch of clicks and pushes and knobs and all that stuff. Uh, right. I, my favorite thing about his ship is that it looks a lot like the Winnebago from Spaceballs. It's like the same shape. A little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. and, if, and if Baby Yoda is barf, you know, I think I think they should probably just use John Candy lines as baby Yoda's voice. I think that's how they should do it. I don't think they should worry about casting a big name. Just use the John Candy stuff you got on record. And I think we'll be in good shape. Um, I also want to, I just want to call out that line um, where Amy Sedaris says, I'm going to look after you and I'm going to charge him extra. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> when she, when she finds the, the child, uh, that's one of my favorite things for sure. Now we were talking just before, I know just before we kind of came on here, we were talking about, who exactly the child is, and Tony, I know you'd seen some theory somewhere you wanted to kind of yeah. give some info about. So what what were that? What was that all about? Well, I mean, one of them. I mean, the big one is oh, it's a baby Yoda means it's Yoda's baby. But like I said, I don't I don't know why. I'm just I just don't feel that that's what it is. I just think that's so obvious that I don't think that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another theory that that is Yoda cloned. That somebody somehow cloned Yoda, mm-hmm. and that's him now, as fifty years old, which is a baby. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that one either. The one I like the best, mm-hmm. and we were talking about this before we, you know, came online, okay. is that uh, this is the last of whatever species Yoda is from, and apparently they're all force sensitive. Um, and the big thing is this is the last force sensitive trying to clone baby Yoda. Or the child uh, to have, you know, all these four sensitive beings. I like that theory the best. I know we're going to find out, ideally. Mm, but hopefully. those are the theories, and that's what I'm going with for now. <clears throat> so we'll see what happens. So. Okay, okay. Ken, what, what of those, I mean, uh, what do you think about those options? Does one of those sound like pretty likely to you, or do you think, it, not sure? It, or it, something I, different. Yeah, that's what the uh, the internet's saying, like, about the clone. Mm-hmm. I, I suspect that because Yoda was originally in on that. Yes. That was his. That was his gig. He he sought that out. He drew up the contract. He found the Kaminoans. He built that whole relationship between the council and the clone, the cloners. Mm-hmm. That was his gig. So I would think he would have a little bit of uh, sidebar interest in that. Um, but I'm also think just just my own thought, and it's probably completely wrong, but because. Jedi Masters don't die, uh, except for Mace Windu. And Qui-Gon Who, Jinn. Yeah, Qui-Gon Jinn, right. We didn't see mm. them come back, but we did see Yoda as energy. And that Anakin. dude with the huge forehead that was like... Right. Uh, so we saw these these pres- these energy forces, these, the, the, you know, they were, they were physical, now they're the, the force. Mm. So it's not... And y'all are familiar with Doctor Who. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Doctor Who regenerates every so often. Whenever the contract ends for the actor. Right. The contract <laughs> ends. They regenerate. They come back. They're sometimes more powerful. They're sometimes a little goofy. They have a different scarf. You know, whatever. <laughs> they can be a little bit different, yeah. but they come back. They're still the Doctor. So I think Yoda, being as omnipresent and as close to God as we can possibly get to in this reality, could re-energize himself but start over and become the child well let's think about what that says background there you know and it's so close to christmas too so who knows how disney's (laughs) gonna roll with this and for me you know let's think about the timeline here so the child is 50 years old it's five years after rotj so he was 45 Mm -hmm. years there I think, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, we're talking 25 years from ROTJ to Revenge of the Sith. So he'd have been 20. And then that's 10 years. 
no, 15 years before that is the Phantom to, Menace. Uh, Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace. So, something. So I'm like clocking that, that right. That it's thirty. That's yeah. 35 years or so. Like we're 35 years on from Phantom Menace. So mm -hmm. the child would have been. It's 15. So the child has existed for 15 years longer than that. So longer than the story. So mm -hmm. whatever machinations caused the child to be born happened before we've seen the Star Wars universe. It could be anything. Now, like like you guys are saying, uh, the Kaminoans. Yoda went to Camino. Mm -hmm. That is canon. It happened in the uh, the detective noir thriller Attack of the Clones. Um, and like you guys said, he just was the guy that was the point man for the cloning. So it would make a lot of sense if he had been cloned. Um, also, we know that the EU is rife with different types of species that do have different force sensitivity levels, the different prevalences. I'm thinking specifically of the Isolamari, which is the, uh, which is like a, a lizard that has, creates a bubble that the force, you know, you can't see the force in because yeah. their natural predators use the force to hunt. So it's just, it's just sort of Darwinistic. And so it would make sense if there was a planet where this was in the ecosystem that the sentient life that developed there would have that ability and would be the apex predator of that ability. Think about, you got to think of evolution like an arms race. You know what I mean? So definitely some cool, cool stuff. Uh, I could see it either way. It definitely seems like cloning is involved for sure. Okay. For sure. So this is either a clone or a cloning a th to be cloned subject is my opinion. I definitely don't think it's actually Yoda because Again, it's 50 years old. It's not, you know, brand new. So that's my beef on that. And this uh, segment is brought to you by Where's the Beef? A saying we don't use anymore in the year 2019. But we should. But we should. It's not a, <laughs> we definitely it's not should. A um, all right. So let's. So we talked a little bit about um, sort of the general speculation about Baby Yoda. And Baby Yoda is what drives the numbers, puts the butts in the seats. That's why we started out with that. But let's, let's move on just a little bit here and let's talk about. <laughs> what happens on Tatooine? So we cut to a very familiar cantina, right? A very familiar cantina. Mm -hmm. And we meet Toro Calican. Now, Toro Calican is a a new character. He is sort of like a Billy the Kid character, right? If we're if, if we're thinking like this is a western, like I like to say all the time, even in my sleep. I say this is a Western. What did you guys think about this character? What What was your general... Ken, what did you generally overall think about Toro Calican? Uh, solid and relatable. Mm. Uh, very, uh, very much. He's just a, just a kid mm -hmm. against the galaxy. He probably has a pretty... Pretty sad backstory. Okay. I feel... I think he's really down on his luck. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's had a lot of breaks. I think he's seeing this as his first step into, you know, mature manhood, you know, bragging rights. He's putting a, he doesn't want any money from Mando to help him. As we learn, you know, I'm jumping ahead, but as he just needs his help to get this, to get this score, he wants the reputation and he thinks that's, that's going to change his life. So he's he's putting a lot of he's putting a lot of merit and a lot of uh, faith in the fact that Mando's going to help him catch this assassin, this bounty, get him into the guild, and that's going to change his life completely. So he's a gambler. Mm. So, right, the gambler is an excellent Star Wars character archetype. Yes, absolutely. It's it's in everything. It's in every, every single story, backstory, <laughs> offshoot. Everything has a gambler. And I think he's he's our gambler. He's the one that's gonna roll the dice and put all in. This is the guy. This is the guy who's gonna play Sabak. However, you play that game, I've. Right. They, this is one of those games Tony knows as well as I do. In the EU novels, they dedicate chapters like this is the Sabak hand that won Han Solo something, and you'd be like forty five uh, in the huh? in the va vagary field. This is vague now. We don't know what that means. <laughs> Tony, what'd you think about our special guest, Billy the Kid, Bounty Hunter? Uh, um, yeah. Again, it's so funny how all these reference other characters or other mm -hmm. situations. Um, first of all, I think of like a very, very young Luke 
you know, when we first meet him, he's a little, you know, awkward, literally, you know, doesn't know his place in the world, wants to get something better, you know, um, you know, I'm going, I was going to go to Toshi Station and get some power converters, you know, just stuff <laughs> like that. And, you know, I mean, just like a kid and he just wants to get into the guild. Mm. He wants to be, you know, a bounty hunter. Obviously, he's a stumbling, bumbling little kid, doesn't know what he's doing at all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, trying to find his place in the galaxy. It's like it's a lot of references. You know, just um, a little awkward. You know, <clears throat> even like Han Solo at times was a little bit, you know, like awkward yeah. and just a little bit weird. And you know, but, you know, I liked it a lot. I thought it was really cool. Awesome, awesome. You know, I picked up, and this is this is something I said. You know, right as soon as they started talking, uh, I, he sounded so much like Hayden Christensen that it it was distracting for me to the point where I was thinking to myself, why did they cast Hayden Christensen as a bounty hunter? in this show he's already darth vader like does he need a b-roll in this story like doesn't mm-hmm. he get enough play uh but it's not of course hayden christensen it is in fact uh jake cannavale whose uh, dad bobby cannavale was the uh the villain for a season on boardwalk empire uh so shout out there um i thought he was interesting because you couldn't tell exactly how naive he was and and that is something that made his character really work because he seemed unprepared but not stupid you know so it seemed like he was inexperienced but he had promise and of course the only thing he did wrong was cross mando i mean that's very stupid to do uh it's not a smart idea to cross the you know legendary bounty hunter with the beskar armor uh, and think you can just get away with it. Guys, why the heck didn't he just run away with the child? Why did he wait for Mando to come back? W- who cares about Mando, right? I mean, he's got best car armor, but if this child's worth that much, you grab the kid, you get off world, right? Makes sense to me. Uh, M- Mando will find you. <laughs> You're right to the guild, Ken. Right to the guild. I mean, you, know, you don't even... You don't even pass go. No. That's the thing. You got to make sure you don't even want to pass go. Uh, and I think it goes back to, you know, the being naive and not exactly the most worldly character mm-hmm. of, yeah, why don't you just grab the child? But at the same time, he's getting a little bit greedy. Well, thinking, well, if I bring in the guy that crossed the guild, mm-hmm. now I'm going to be even more popular than just bringing in, you know, the, the prize possession. So you're being a little bit too greedy, just naive. Mm-hmm. That's what that's the way I thought about it. Just you know, like you know what, quit while you're ahead, kid. You know, you just you don't even know what you're doing already. So you know, don't, don't jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so you know, and so he's an interesting character, and he's played very well. So this plot, basically, he hires Mando to ride out with him to capture a super soldier who is now. Ken, you pointed this out to me, played by the actress from an actress from Battlestar Galactica. Is that right? Yes, yeah, Apollo. Apollo, and what was her what was her deal in Battlestar Galactica? Right, there was something weird about her character. Well, you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, I'm it's spoiler. It's a thing that was on 20 years ago. I don't think it's it's okay to spoiler alert a TV show that's been off the air for 15 years. Well, Apollo was a guy, but then it was played by a girl, right? Well, she also was playing a secret sort of. She was a Cylon, right? She was on the Final Five. No, no, well, she was she, a Cylon all the time, right? Right. They knew right she away. Was a plane. Right. She was a like a. She was a spy. Mm-hmm. She was a she was a, one a Cylon. Uh, what would you call? What do you call it? Uh, a skinwalker. Something I don't know. In fact, I don't. But but yeah, she was she was evil okay. the whole time, which was completely off book from what the original Battlestar Galactica built her built that character as so it's a little bit odd so she used to playing a, a protagonist mm-hmm. you know like this uh, an evil an evil person uh, super super neat. now she's a super soldier and when when she is captured which is a very it's a neat action sequence it's really cool with flares and distractions and it's a neat sequence you should check it out it's a podcast it doesn't translate the same way on a podcast um but she tries to talk the kid into betraying Mando with her. And she does way too good a job. 
<laughs> of selling, yeah. betraying Mando because it gets her killed right away. Um, which is quick, quick. Or you said, could you say quick? I sounded like wait. No, I was just like, wait, no, quick. What? Absolutely, real quick. quick. Uh, who? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? The deal is with her bounty only being like bringing alive, right? Because. Mando says she's no good to me dead, which is, of course, awesome. Um, why do you think she's a bringer in a live bounty? What do you think, what what reason would they have to not want her dead? I'm just saying, I mean, who knows? You know, maybe do like, you know, the bring out an interrogation droid or something like mm -hmm. that. Or she knows more that whoever has the bounty on her wants to get that out of her. Um, I really didn't think about that aspect of it, but now that you bring it up, I mean, that's, I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Just like, you know what, there's more to her. She's got some information. So any girl will have to get it and get it out of her, possibly. Well, uh, she's a, she's a weapon, right? Mm -hmm. She's a tool. I mean, not a tool like bad, like a tool, like she can be used right. to, to an end. So she's a weapon. So she can be trained, retrained, told to do something and she'll do it. She's, I mean... Her her prowess at, at fighting and defense is is amazing. She's I didn't I didn't even think she they were going to be able to subdue her, but they did. So that was a little bit. That's the only thing I felt it was too easy to get her. Yeah, too easy. It did seem like she should have more tricks up her sleeve than just one gun. You know, that 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 you're right. I agree with you, Ken. I, I think she should have had. It should have been a lot harder to kind of capture her than that. But she had what one rifle and one knife. Right now is it so she if we go along with the video game mm -hmm. uh, idea that we've been talking about each episode is like a, a challenge or a level in a video game. She should have been the boss. Yeah, this level and it should have been really, really hard. Right, like, that <laughs> would have been multiple lives and checkpoint saves to, yeah. to take her down because but it was like too easy. They threw up the flares. They blinded her. Mando was able to get up on her. You know, it was just, you know, a little bit, little bit too easy. She should have I been better armed because... They're sticking with the, like, 35-minute or under episode, uh, so they have to cut everything out. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, we, well, yeah, there well, we got go. that Easy Rider montage where, you know, we got another montage that wouldn't be in this if it was a movie of them riding out in the Dune Sea, right? Yeah, right. Uh, so that, and that's about, you know, we get back to the, we, the there's a double cross here. Mando gets back to the ship. Mando blinds the kid. Mando shoots the kid. The kid, uh, I'm sorry, the child and Mando get up in the uh, bounty hunter RV and head off for parts <laughs> unknown. And that's where we leave them. Guys, what are your final thoughts? And we'll start, we'll start with Tony. Tony, what are your final thoughts on the episode? Looking into next week's episode six. Well, I, this was my favorite one. Um, I mean, one, like I said, we're starting with a space battle, you know, a, a prerequisite that you have to have this in some way in Star Wars, so we got it. And then just to go back to Tatooine and seeing Mos Eisley, I'm like, yes, we're home, we're back, oh, and we're back to Mando's doing what he does. Mm -hmm. He's a bounty hunter right away. As soon as he hears, well, let's go on another job. I'm in. You know, <laughs> so, so that's what he's all about. I just thought this was a great episode. So the cliffhanger at the mm. end, you know, who was yes. there? Just everything we, I mean, this, this is by far my favorite. Love who is that? Ken, who do you think that is at the end who's stooping low? Right. Right now, I'm going to say that's Boba yeah. Fett. Right. I mean, unless there's some other evidence that anyone's able to present, but I think that that's what they want us to mm. think. If you look at it, if you pause and go frame by frame during that sequence... It's it's Boba Fett. Those are his legs. That's his tattered uh, cape. Um, I you know I almost smell the sarlacc. <laughs> uh, digestive juice dripping oh, no. his arm. Hold on. What's it smell like? It smells like ass. <laughs> <laughs> more like in WD forty. More like Boba <laughs> butt. <laughs> Brake brake cleaner. It smells like brake cleaner is what it smells like. <laughs> Just gasoline and brake cleaner. All right. So, and you know, I'm excited. 
it's great to see the story progressing. I, I do like the sort of uh, the episodic nature when we get a little bit of this, a little bit of this. You know, the guild's still coming, the Mando's still famous, and the child is safe for now. So we'll see where that goes next. You know, we'll be back next week with the next episode of Carbonite Bounty BS. And this is Carbonite Bounty BS, a Mandalorian podcast. And from his here at Nerd Cyclopedia, subscribe and we'll see you soon. Later. See ya. Mm hmm. Carbonite Bounty BS is a production of Nerd Cyclopedia Transcontinental Podcasts. Nerd Cyclopedia.